Hey everyone, welcome to Why Life Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keys. Today, part two on a series around social media, and we're gonna deal a little bit more with content creators and how it's changing wildlife photography, maybe not for the good, right after this. So part two on this quick thoughts series just around social media. And today I wanted to dig in a little bit deeper around this concept of content creators and, and where it's moving to. So uh, over the last year or so, TikTok has influenced the way that both Facebook and Instagram run. And those are really the three big social media platforms for photography sharing. Now, I mentioned in the first video, there are other photo sharing uh, services out there. And I was kind of curious, like what people are using. So feel free down in the comments, if you didn't watch that video, let us know what are you using currently to share your videos, whether it's your own personal website or a photo sharing service or just on social media. But social media is the fast food photography sharing applications. These, these are easy, they're fast, they're quick, you consume a lot of it. But this trend towards, I should say this trend away from still photography and using those platforms in these short format multimedia video kind of applications, very similar to TikTok, has changed the way that people are, are showcasing their work. And I wanna talk a little bit specifically about content creators and what that is. So for me, the difference between a photographer and a content creator is the photographer is focused on the final outcome, the still image. In my mind, it's always, can I frame it? Can I put it on a wall? That to me is still my mindset. Now, I have dabbled in content creation, both on YouTube and Instagram, and I like to have fun with it. At the, at the end of the day, it is a part of who I am, but I still consider myself a wildlife photographer. I've done some experiments where I, I went through 30 days and actually just recorded these short format videos, these reels, to see what that would be, and, and maybe I'll share that over on Instagram. So if you're curious about that, make sure you're following me over on Instagram. But, but I saw something recently that just, just stuck with me. And it, it honestly, it bothered me. And I want to know if it bothers you. Here's what I saw. A photography account, I should say photography, <laughs> an account that had half a million followers. And each of these short format videos that were being put out um, was getting millions of, of views and wildly popular. And, and the comments were just out you know, amazing how great you are. And I, you know, I just kind of looked at the work and I thought, man, they, they, they don't see it. So the, the, the work that was being shared was, um, things like lynxes, fox, bear. And if you looked at it enough and it wasn't still images, again, these are short format, show the video, show the scene, you know, maybe show the photographer sometimes, uh, different people are using it differently but wildly popular. And I started to realize these, these all have the same habitat. It's a, there's, listen, I, I'm smart enough to know what real wildlife photography is and what uh, captive life photography is. In fact, I did a video on captive life photography and, and that's just a sore subject for me in general. People that go to game farms and zoos, um, but then try to pass it off. And I'm not, you know, anybody that's done zoo photography, you know, most people, they share it, they caption it, but these are people that are kind of passing themselves off. Well, this specific content creators and many like them, I don't even think they're wildlife photographers, but gigantic followings capitalizing off of this TikTok format. And I thought, gosh, it's just like, people don't get it. There's no disclosure. This person is obviously shooting captive animals. And it's not what wildlife photography was, was, is supposed to be to me. And I want to know, is it, how do you feel? Is, that, is it supposed to be you? And here's what I, I felt. The genre is being exploited because it's popular. People like wildlife. They like animals. They like cute videos. They like, uh, you know, the, the, the fights and the interaction. And they like, they like all that wild aspects of it. But these aren't wild animals. These are essentially pets. Open the cage. Uh, I, I saw one photographer who who hosts these he's sleeping with the animals <laughs> like literally cuddled up with them petting them it, it it bothered me and then i thought these content creators now because of the format they're exploiting this so listen I, i'm going to show you a couple videos i'm laying out or a couple images i'm laying out in the rain i'm up at 5 a.m 
I'm waiting two hours sitting behind some camouflage, just waiting to photograph wild ducks in a beautiful environment. Here's some, here's some still images, right? I, I think these are pretty, right? And I'm proud of it. And, and the work that goes into it and, and, and all of that matters, it, it pays off. You know, you put all that hard work in and then you get some nice images. And then I see somebody producing dozens of hours of content, just literally filling a page up. And they probably did it in a day or two. Like, like pay somebody, bring out the pets, let's film it, let's record it, let's set it to some music and let's go viral. Let's get huge audiences with people that think we're wildlife photographers. And, and I, I'm not even sure this person is really a wildlife photographer. And then it's kind of like on to the next thing, you know, on to the next adventure. Let me pay somebody else to get the easy, the easy work in that's very, very popular. And it is rewarded. It's rewarded from the public. It's rewarded through Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And um, I don't know, is it is it like the death of wildlife photography? I don't know. But what I do know is that it's influencing behavior and I think it's taking away from people that want to do the still photography, which not that nobody likes it anymore. I'm not, I'm not saying that, but it may not be as, um, it may not hit the algorithms the same way as the short form videos. So maybe there's a, a push away from that. And I had this thought in my head when we're spending more time recording ourselves doing photography and we're spending more time taking images of ourselves doing the work, are our priorities messed up as photographers? Now, you may not identify as a photographer. So if you identify as a content creator, that's great. I'm just really talking about people that are have always identified as wildlife photographers and are they being influenced by this and away from the craft, away from the art, away from the photography, away from the nature, and now it's becoming about what do I need to do to remain relevant? And do you feel that way? Do you feel some pressure? Um, if you're a wildlife photographer identifying you know, primarily as a wildlife photographer, do you feel pressure to move towards that? Do the content creators, do they get under your skin a little bit sometimes? And again, I, I have some of that in me. So, you know, I may get under some people's skin sometimes, but I, I do identify as a photographer. I dabble in the content creation in the, in the short form videos. But, um, and, and I will say, it probably has influenced me, this pressure to say, you know, you gotta keep up, you gotta, you gotta evolve, you gotta stay relevant, or, or you just the old guy over on the wayside <laughs> with, the, with the gray in his beard. So anyway, uh, let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think of that whole idea of, of the content creators? Are they using wildlife? not really passionate about it, not, not, not the heart and soul of how they're made up, but they're kind of using the format. Does that bother you? Do you, do you see it happening? Uh, check out some accounts, dabble around. You will see this stuff. It's pushed into my feed. I don't follow these people, but I, I see the, they, the way that social media works now is the algorithm. They try to figure out what you want to see and they give it to you whether you want it or not. And that's been tough to deal with over the last several years as well. So anyway, your thoughts down below. This was part two on social media, really specifically about content creators. What I'd like to know, do you feel that the, that some people are kind of using wildlife? Were you aware that this is, goes on? You know, these game farms, these captive animals being used this way, portrayed as wildlife. Real quick story before I wrap up. Uh, I was watching one of these and it was a, a lynx jumping up in the air and doing like a backflip with two other links in the background. Now, immediately my radar goes off because this is very unusual, but hey, maybe somebody found a den, set up on it, respected the animals and this, I'm watching it again, literally not kidding you. And I shared this on Instagram. You see a fishing line or a rope being dropped down with a piece of meat on it. You can see it. The lynx jumps up for it. They retrieve it or retract it. And the lynx does a backflip. I don't think the, the, the I, I, I'm going to use the term artist loosely. I don't think the person that shared this viral video knew or recognized this little piece of meat hanging on a string. But I saw it and I shared it out on social media without their name attached to the account just to show people what actually happens. So yeah, that stuff being passed off as wildlife photography, no caption, no nobody explaining what's really going on. Just, hey, look at what I saw. You know, this amazing scene. Uh, does that bother you? And are you feeling pressure to move away from your instincts as a wildlife photographer and start producing more of these short form videos and this, this kind of content 
as opposed to still images. Let me know down uh, in the in the in the comments what you think about that uh, short video today. Again, these quick thoughts. Try to keep it to about ten minutes. Uh, let me know what you think, but it's really about what you're thinking. I'm giving you my thoughts. Now I need to know down below uh, what are your thoughts. So thanks for your support on the channel. If you're not subscribed, little subscription button down there. Make sure you click that little bell that lets you notif uh, that gives you notifications when I put out new videos. So make sure you hit that. That's a big deal to me right now. So hit that little notification bell. Um, as always, thanks for your support on the channel. And I hope we can continue to find inspiration in, in real, authentic, genuine wildlife photography. I hope we can continue to find inspiration in that together.